this dress I have under the picture. It, it is a burgundy, meaning red wine, velvet um, dress, which is uh, like a tube. Of course, not on my body. My body is nice and curvy. Um, stretch. Underneath, I have a, a strapless bra, of course. And I'm not sure if it has a zipper at the side or not. It's a little bit thick. I know that because when I fold it for traveling, it's not that um, convenient. So I have another one, because this is the one I use for my recitals. I mean, I have, and then I had another one, which is red, red, very slim, and actually it was, uh, I had from two sides, I could wear it, which I like too. And I remember that Fabrizio Milano, he actually pulled out that exact very strapless bra, which I used to have for a very long time, black. No, it could be also like a bikini or just a top. And I remember when we had a concert with the whole group, he, he put us all in place and he actually pulled that dress down and put my bra up, so visible to the audience. That was in, in the concert. And I felt like shy about it, or almost ashamed, which is completely absurd because nothing was shown. <gasps> Shit, I was touching the microphone. I'm gonna check it out. Okay, here I am. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, you can hear it, but not that. So, <laughs> yes, I just wanted to make sure that everything is on, on record, right? So it could have been just part of the dress. So no need to, but I'm that picky with my body and showing my body. As you can see in my outfit, there's no, nothing, nothing provocative about my outfit ever, because I don't consider this an option at all for my life, absolutely. What is in the house, it could be anything. As little as nothing or little, that doesn't matter at all. But not for other people's eyes. I had a trip to to the States. I bought actually the dress, I bought, I bought it in February. I had no, who gives a shit when I bought the dress, right? <laughs> no, but it was after Christmas. So I, I didn't know anything. I went to any store and that was Macy's. At the time I didn't know what it was. And I got it from Gabeltisch actually, I have to say. Well, not really. I, I got it on sale and it cost me $80. I have no clue why I remember the number. The, the velvet dress, which is in the beginning. The other one I bought in Mexico, they had like one store and I have no clue. I think it's in Mexico, everything is cheaper. In Mexico would have probably paid 80 pesos for it. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Because somehow they've crossed the border and everything becomes cheaper. No, the, the other dresses, I probably spent 300 pesos on it, which is a lot in pesos, but it's only 30 bucks. I also used to have two other dresses in Cuernavaca, which I liked a lot, and both had flowers on it. One looked like a flamenco dancer, and they were over the knee. All of my dresses are over the knee and almost to the foot, depending on which one. No, these flower dresses not. One was really, really white, and it was really cute and romantic. I loved it a lot. I used it often like in the opera workshop, with my arms free because I like it when it's warm. The other one, two arms free, but not spaghetti dress. They both are similar, but not really. I don't know, certainly I like things and I like to wear them all the time, but I hope not anymore. <laughs> Oh, it could be different. And the red dress for the recital was like synthetic and had a little bit of play in the upper part. On the other hand, I was never really that happy with this dress. I tried out a few other things. Uh, I used, okay, in the very beginning when I started singing, I had a, uh, what? Not talking about dresses now. I had a, uh, what? Not talking about dresses now. Okay. I had a white dress, which was similar to the red wine, but white. And always like that. Um, arms free and over the knee. And yeah, tied to my body, a little bit of crepe kind of style. I used this a lot, and as I had my first recital, I found it adequate to actually wear that very same dress. But the next one, that was in the San Mateo Passion at the church. It was at the, it was a recital at the Cuernavaca Cathedral. 
a concert, music concert. And I had a solo from Bach, Erbarme mich. So that was like in spring. And that very same year in winter, um, it was performed the Messias from Handel. And I had a solo and I bought myself an amazing dress and I was just celebrating the end of my studies. And yes, my mother got me money after I finished my studies in international relationship. And I spent all the money in one dress. <laughs> I'm, I like to invest my money in useful things <clears throat> and things which last. Since I never had any, I just, <clears throat> I, I, I save it and I get something which is actually useful, like a dress like that. And it was an amazing dress. I looked at it and I fell in love with it. And I only can wear it and recite it because the whole thing was like, um, Chingakiras <laughs> y Shit, I even say that. Chakiras, which is, and ah, I look like an angel. Here you go, all shiny. It was so nice. I remember that I had a we had not had a dressing room, so the whole choir and we all had to be in the same place, and I felt uncomfortable and shy. So I waited for them to exit the, you know, the room we had, which wasn't a dressing room in the church. I have no clue. One room over there. I waited for them to exit, and when I was alone, because I was awaiting my my entrance. I changed my dress and when I arrived on stage, the whole choir and the whole group like <gasps> rounding <coughs> over the crowd because it was so impressive. And I think it's just right because, hey, I mean, I, I do a solo. I'm supposed to be, you know, I have no diva lures, but I'm supposed to be la diva. I'm supposed to be the star. I'm supposed to be the thing to look up to and to adore and her beauty and prettiness it's my responsibility so the dress was just adequate although it was way over top for anybody around me but not really for me and I think the whole thing was a huge success just because of that beautiful dress <laughs> yeah white or maybe ivory color I cherish it quite a bit but anyway that, that's that about dresses no I did have another one and another one which was weird I tried it out all right, I bought once a, I don't know why, yellow BCBG dress, a short one. I was just so bored, I wanted to have different things. And then I got the invitation to sing for a vulgar person who wanted to become elegant for one night. So I sang on her birthday and I had a large party in some mansion in Tiburon. And I, for a certain reason I chose to wear that dress, which I thought was adequate for the occasion, because it wasn't that formal. And I also sang Musetta for that one only time at the time, or the first time. Musetta represents from Mimi the opposite what Mimi is. I am like Mimi. I would say I am Mimi. I'm not Musetta. And vocally it was hard at the beginning, but then it wasn't. So I did Musetta and that meant a completely different character. And that fit the Volga very well. I mean, not that she knew about it. And... The dress was okay, but I kind of did not want it to repeat. So I sing with that as well, so I can play it out. Because it's not like Carmen. It's not really understood. Carmen is coquette, but Carmen is not a dummy. She doesn't have education, but her her sensuality or is natural. Her sexuality is natural to where she came from. But not Musetta. Musetta is a bitch. But not that bitch back then in the years more concretely, overtly hitting on the old guy to get money. So she is a dummy and not that bitch because in the time there were not that bitches yet. There was more like understood. I'm going to present my body to you. So you will like me and will buy my clothing and will buy my food. Like an abusive person opposite to me, me. So it's not like my role at all, but the the, the waltz is good. It's kind of funny. So I did that. And that was that. I don't know what else to say. Actually, I lost that dress, that dress. But somehow it didn't sit my body well. Not the red wine. Not, that's the only one I actually cherish quite a bit. A simple dress. Okay, so the question is, what happened with the match site? I remember three contacts on that match site. 
which one would we like to hear first? Okay. Let's do the least important first. No? Okay. I was contacted by someone on that much site, actually via phone. And that was when I was exiting Mexico. I was on the airport. I'm going to open a new video for this story. <laughs> 